Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, and this is case 37 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a flush osteal right coronary CTO that was successfully treated using the retrograde approach. The patient did have PCI a few years prior to the current presentation with stents in the proximal right coronary artery, however, presented two years later with a complete occlusion of the proximal right coronary stents. There was not a stamp on the proximal RCA, making undergrade treatment extremely challenging since there is no stamp to get the guide wire escalation started. Essentially, all of the patient's heart was supplied from this lima bifurcating graft that had one branch going to the LAD and another branch subtying the obtuse marginal, which in turn, with a very large epicardial collateral, was supplying the distal right coronary artery. We had extensive discussion with the patient and the family given the associated risks. However, the patient did have a normal ejection fraction and a decision was made to attempt retrograde crossing via the Lima graft. When the Lima is used, especially when it's the last remaining vessel like this patient, it is very important to ensure that we don't compromise flow through the Lima during retrograde crossing attempts. And that can happen because advancing wires through the lima can cause a straightening of the tortuosity and pseudo lesion formation and then compromise the flow. So we first inserted a soft guide wire and wait a few minutes. The patient did not have any chest pain or EKG changes. Then we advanced the Corsair. You can appreciate how tight those turns are. And then also waited for a few minutes to see if the patient tolerated the procedure well. Fortunately, the patient was doing well. There was continued flow both in the LAD as well as the obtuse marginal branch. Therefore, continued our procedure. We were able to easily cross this large epicardial collateral from the obtuse marginal all the way into the right posterior descending artery. And then we were able to advance the guide wire essentially all the way until the proximal right coronary artery stand. However, we then encountered significant difficulty at advancing wires to the last few millimeters of the proximal RC occlusion. And this is not uncommon for instant stenosis when the tissue can become very fibrotic or calcified and very hard to penetrate. The other problem in this case was that we had to go through the lima and given the tortuosity that the wires had to navigate, by the time the wires arrived to the tip of the coarser catheter, there was no torque left. We could not literally reach the distal part of the coarser with a Pilot 200 Confianza Pro 12 or Fielder XT guide wire. And when the wires came out, they were completely deformed. This um, made us appreciate the value of the Gaia wires, which are the only ones who actually would reach back. However, despite using the Gaia wires, we could not penetrate back. We then used a technique called the Carlino technique, which is contrast injection through the microcatheter, in an attempt to modify the intimal tissue, potentially cross some micro dissections and facilitate subsequent crossing. This is the verse injection. There is not much flow of contrast. We tried again with guide wires, but there was no much progress yet, although we are still within the previously placed stand. Then we'll try the Carlino again, and maybe now there's some suspicion that some of the contrast may be reaching out to the aorta, but not quite yet. And then try it one more time, and now we do have some feeling of a marginal or a proximal marginal or a conus branch telling us we're in the right way and we're very, very close to the tip of the stand. And finally, with the fourth Carlino injection, we're now seeing the contrast flow into the aorta. So this is an example of sequential use of the Carlino technique alternating with various Gaia guide wires until finally we're able to get all the way into the order. We're able to advance a run through wire all the way out uh, in the aorta. And then um, the guide wire was snared using a 27 by 45 uh, millimeter end snare. However, unfortunately, the wire came off the snare. And that happened within the guide catheter. So we have the wire still halfway in the guide catheter, but could not pull it all the way back. We tried different ways to get the guide wire from the guide, including the micro snare elite that was not successful. And finally, we used a guideliner catheter 
through which we advance the ensnare. And by doing that, we're able to advance the guide liner in, advance the Atrieve three loop snare, and then snare the guide wire with this loop that was then inserted into the guide liner. And this is how it looks when it's gradually coming out. The other operator is pushing the wire back. Very important to push rather than to pull. And it's slowly coming back. And then here it is where the wire comes back from the guide liner. And this illustrates how challenging it was advancing the guide wires through the Lima. There's this uh, significant tortuosity and deformation of the wires that have to navigate through all this tortuosity. The lesion was subsequently ballooned with high pressure balloon inflations. And then after multiple balloons and use of the osteal flask catheter, we're able to recanalize the lesion and obtain an excellent result. Total contrast was 320, 73 minutes of fluoro and 3.9 air care radiation dose. The patient remained hemodynamically stable throughout the, the case and at the end the lima was still patent without any problems. This case actually has been published in CCI, where you can refer for more details about the case, but does provide several important lessons. The first one is that retrograde via the Lima is a risky procedure and should be done with a lot of care and thought before doing it, and potentially with prophylactic use of hemodynamic support. However, in cases like this one where there is no other option, and the patient is severely symptomatic, then that can be used as a route, taking all available precautions. This case also shows the advantages of the composite core Gaia guide wires. This may not be seen in more simple cases, but in this case where we had to navigate through the tortuosity of the Lima, literally the only wire that made it to the tip of the coarser catheter was the Gaia wire. Third, when we have essentially a impenetrable lesion, or we are stuck in a lesion and we cannot advance anymore, using the Carlino technique, in this particular case the reverse Carlino, since it was done in the retrograde direction, can help us modify the plaque and cross through the occlusion. A key component of the Carlino technique is to advance a small volume of contrast, usually 0.5 to 1 cc, under scenic guidance to avoid causing extensive dissections, but causing enough that can subsequently facilitate wire crossing. We use the RG3 wire for externalization to provide an extra tracking and snaring. We had to use a creative snare through a guide liner to snare our retrograde guide wire that came off into the guide catheter. And finally, we use the osteal flask balloon to optimize the result and facilitate future re-engagement of the lesion should any stenosis occur. Thank you very much.